I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, 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 oh. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, 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 oh. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business? Sign Just pressure. review the pages yeah, of a marketing you. plan. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Got my capability statement and I'm ready to go. Got my balance sheet, my PL, my statement of control. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Hey, 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 entrepreneurs, this is the business zone with. Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. Crystal, what you got going on there for Christmas? Wow, it's it's great. It's finally here. It's been it's been an interesting Christmas season with all the stuff going on in the news, with all the craziness. All and kinds again, of we crazy got, stuff. We got sucker punched again last uh, week. I mean, I guess so we're gonna have to deal with this uh, man. Um, so we need to be ready for that. Gotta be ready, just like we're telling these small businesses to be ready, Crystal. Yeah, gotta we be gotta be ready because there's some stuff going on. I think for me, um, and I guess this is why you know I'm ready for Christmas and I've done my Christmas shopping last night. I I I got two three more gifts to pick up tonight. Uh, but you know the spirit just seems to be down because yeah, it's been it so is. crazy, it right? Is down. But I think for me the biggest part is the the out. I mean, I guess the burst outburst of the racial uh, issues that are going on that in this country. Crazy. That is just ridiculous. Is we, you know, our our when the 60s and we were going to the civil rights movement, that was one thing because it was about us and them, right? But there's so many other people in yeah. this country. Yeah. Why we can't figure out how we can come together as a whole and then all of a sudden certain people feel that they're just better than other people. That's insane. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's Unbelievable. absolutely insane to me. I think one of the things we need to do, Crystal, all minority groups, we need to come together, start teaming up teaming our resources, then we'll become the majority, and yes. then we probably won't see too much, too many of these things going. Well, you'd push it back, because yeah. I think uh, with uh, the crazy man, he, uh, he um, and and I, I'm sorry, I, he just <laughs> cannot be my president, so I'm just going to deal with the fact that he's Trump and he's not my president. It, it just it seems ludicrous that you could have a president, President Obama, yeah. a man with class, style, Dignity. brilliance, and you come behind it with an idiot. It just That just seems unfathomable, so I know yeah. God must have a bigger plan yeah. we just don't know what that plan is yet yeah. so and we're not supposed to know yeah. but here's what i do know that us as a as human beings not co- not a color mm-hmm. not a gender not a sexual preference we as you human beings need to stand behind each other exactly. in solidarity that's exactly what and it is so when we see uh people behaving outlandish with other people mm-hmm. i mean there's been a couple of things on facebook this week just just turn your stomach. Really? Um, one lady, she was in a, uh, this was in t- Kentucky, and she was in a Target, and it was two Latino women uh, p- uh, closing out. They were shopping. They were buying whatever they were buying in their yeah. basket, right? Yeah. So they were sisters, it looked like. So they came up to the counter. So one sister came to the counter, and the other one was coming, and so she put her stuff in the basket. My sister and I do that all the yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, we're shopping together, exactly. right? So exactly. one is coming, okay, I'm going to go get in line, and when you're ready. This woman went off on her, calling her all kinds of names and telling her she needed to go back to her own country Uh, and that, you know, stop speaking, learn to speak this uh, language and not her language. And what I saw, and that was bad enough because, you know, ignorance is ignorance, right? And to attack another person without provocation is just ridiculously stupid. But what I did see was that the people in line they didn't do anything it, to stop it. See, that's the that's thing I don't understand. That's the part I don't get. Crystal. That's what I don't understand. Because people see other people behaving stupidly. You know, I'm not going to say badly. Behaving stupidly. Stupid, right. And they do nothing or say nothing about it. They do nothing or say nothing. Because I'm thinking, 
what is wrong with these people? Somebody was off. It was on Facebook Live, so obviously somebody was recording, recording it. it exactly. But what happened to the other people coming up? So my thing is, if someone's being mistreated, then everybody comes and surround that person to support mm -hmm. that person because mm -hmm. that other person will back off if they don't feel they have an audience. Mm -hmm. Bullies back That's off true. when they don't have an audience. That's they don't true. have anybody standing yeah, behind yeah, them. Yeah. And so if we're talking about stopping bullying in school, mm -hmm. how are we as adults going to bully other adults and teach our children exactly not to bully? I mean, how hypocritical that, is that, that? That's exactly what I was going to say. It's very hypocritical. <laughs> that's very hypocritical. very hypocritical. So I think, um, listening audience, if you see one, someone being mistreated, then it is our human right and our responsibility as God chi uh, God's children yeah. to put a stop to it. So we don't have to say anything. Right. Just come and surround that person yes. and give that person a, a stare down yep. Yep. that will back them off. That's exactly we can do that point. that way. No one's, you're not, you're not disrupting the law. Obviously, the store, if they're not stopping it, then they're committing a crime. Mm -hmm. So on the back end of that, if the store is allowing that bad behavior, then maybe we need to sue them and stop going to their stores. That's true. Because we got to put something in place. We got to draw a line in the sand. We got to draw a line in the stand. So if you're going to do this behavior, there's consequences to this yes, behavior. Yes. And so those consequences is that other people that care about other people mm -hmm. are not going to stand and let you do this right. to another human being. And it's very similar to what we, we experience with other small businesses, too, because we see certain small businesses being taken advantage of. Right. And a lot of us say nothing we about say it. We say nothing, nothing about it. We let them go through an abusive loan situation or an abusive right. uh, uh, business consultant uh, situation. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That is just not good. That's right. Not we good got it. We have to say something. We have to step, step up, up for other people up. because that's, that's our role as human beings. Yeah. Got to step up. <laughs> and it doesn't have anything to do with color. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just as human beings. Yeah. We are all God's children. We just happen to have different color of coats. Our that's, coat that's what is I'm a different about. color <laughs> on the outside. Side, but on the inside, we're the exact same people. It's like Joseph Coat of many colors, right? Of many colors. So we can't let uh, crazy Trump and his crazy, <laughs> insane racial lunatics, you know, put us in a position where we're changing the face of what America looks but like. But see, the thing about it is those things will never last. That will never last. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fad. It's here for a little while. People are acting stupid and crazy. But eventually, you know, that reality, uh, that reality thing is going to hit. Right. And so if we stand up for everybody yeah. to let them know whatever their nationality are, we are, is, we're going to be there for you yeah. and we're not going to allow that. And then we come back and we start writing letters to yeah. our local politician yeah. because That's... his policies or whatever they are or not are. I don't think that he has any policies, <laughs> but whatever they are, I mean, they're. Think you're talking dismantling this country, yeah. and it's really yeah. in the overall bigger picture. It's not about color; mm -hmm. it's about the haves and, and the have-nots. Have not. That's exactly what right? it is. This is like Marie Antoinette all over again. Yeah. I mean, let me suppress the, right. the the people that have no money and take continue to take from them while I continue to grow my cough my coffers right. till I have everything and they have nothing. So that's really what we're talking about. And the see, the thing over. about it is, um, what's going to happen is. Uh, they're going to allow him for a while to do his thing, do whatever he does, and then eventually they're going to go, hey, you know, this is getting too close to home. It looks like it's going to affect me at some point. Right. Then his buddies are going to jump in and say, hey, you know, you got to mm -hmm. stop. We can't do that. Well, because the, for him, uh, based upon his uh, clinical narcissistic personality, he is the extremist, right? Mm -hmm. So yesterday I think he made a comment about uh, – well, first of all, Putin made a comment about uh, upping Russians' nuclear nukes oh. and 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 making sure that they're protecting their borders from Syria. What did he say? He came back and said the same thing for here in America. Hmm. Interesting. So you can't have this idiot nowhere near the nuclear button. He said, yeah, we need to up that up and we need to be able to start fighting with nuclear war. That would wipe out billions of people. This is nothing to joke about. So for him to be... That kind of person, the the exaggerator person, um, but also wanting the accolades to go along with that, he will do something dumb. He doesn't because understand the ramifications. He does. He not. does not, and so that's where it. 
you know, we can be positive and we can move forward and do what we need to do. But yeah. we have to understand that this man ain't got he ain't wrapped with all his decks. All his oars <laughs> are not in the water. <laughs> and, and that's why we we got to do our thing, Crystal. We got to do make our sure thing. We put systems in place, access grants, access loan programs, access uh, influencers out there in the marketplace right. to help support us small businesses. The, our small businesses. Yeah. And California is in a great place. I read something as well on this week was that uh, one, California and the, and the whole Western quarter that was all blue, they want to succeed from the United States. Oh, yeah? And California says, we don't need them. We make enough. We got the, in, we got the Hollywood industry, uh, the entertainment uh, industry, and we have the... Um, all of the technology. We got oil, too. We got oil. So we don't need them. Yeah. So they, they need us more than we need so California. So then the the Republicans got on the bandwagon saying if California had not been counted then in the vote, they or we hadn't voted, they would have won, right? Crazy. So then somebody came back this morning and said, well, what about the Appalachians? If the, all of Virginia didn't vote and all the southern states yeah. didn't vote, then Hillary would have won. Exactly. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but California, no we're in a position— <laughs> Because of the fact that we're probably the most li- between New York City and and um, California, we're the most liberal yeah. uh, thinking people, yeah. the most innovative yeah. and the most creative. Oh, yeah. And a lot of our entrepreneurs got all come, the tech people. We got here. all the tech people here, and our entrepreneurial um, uh, percentages are very high here. Yeah. Yeah. So that means f- great things for our business, and we got a gangster governor. So. <laughs> <laughs> So long as we got a gangster governor that's liberal. With some guerrilla tactics. <laughs> that's some guerrilla tactics. So guys know this, that here in, in in California, there are opportunities for you. And so you need to position yourself so that we can take advantage of it. And that's what the business zone is about. That's right. So those of you on Facebook Live, we are actually uh, taping early today at 10. And then we will be, our show will be broadcast at the regular time slot between 3 and 5. So you want to check us out. Out uh, on Morris Media Live at that point in time. Yep. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Uh, Michael Moore says good morning, Gilbert. Hey, Michael. How you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> next next year we're gonna have Gilbert on. Here we're gonna get him already. I gotta I gotta stand for him for easy so he can <laughs> Facebook Live so we can build our our network on Facebook. But we're excited. We are at the end of the year. It is yep. the holiday season. This is our last show. This is Any our. Year? I think so. Oh, next Friday. Oh, next Friday the 30th. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you might have to do that show. I got my girlfriend's sister died this oh, week, I'm and the services are on Saturday, on oh, Friday. Or wow. well, we could do a an encore show that we've done before. Oh, we could do that, too. Yeah, yeah we could, we do, could that. do that, so we, we'll talk about that yeah. and see what that if that works. Okay. Yeah, my 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 best friend, one of my best friends, her sister passed on Sunday. Oh, so I'm the sorry service is that. on Saturday. So it was that. not expected. This time of the year is not a good time. It's not that any time is good for Right, that, but it seems but, like uh yeah. the end of the year they be trying to get up out of here, man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Hey, I'm going to punch my clock in. Right. It starts in October. I used to do, a, uh, was a bookkeeper at a church. It was They were my clients. Yeah. And um, from October to December, we, there was, in October, it was like one or two services uh, a month. Mm-hmm. Then by November, there were like two or three services a week. Wow. And then by, um, hey, December. Deshaun, how are you? And then by December, oh, man, it was, it was on and rocking. Wow. Every week, almost every other day, there was a service. Wow. So it's just, I guess people just like, I got to go. Yeah. I need to be out of here yeah. for the next year. I got things to do up in heaven <laughs> with the man upstairs. So see do. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so are you ready for Christmas? Oh, I'm ready as ready can be. Um, I haven't been doing any shopping and uh, I'm just ke- chilling, kicking back. Okay, uh, okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what this brings. Uh, you know, I tell everybody, hey, I'm not buying any gifts, so don't expect any <laughs> gifts from me. <laughs> <laughs> I um well I have a family and we uh actually I did hi Deshaun good morning how are you um 
my family is usually pretty easy uh, yeah. to shop for, and I yeah. did a lot of that online yeah. with a lot of the vendors that uh, black owned vendors and some others. Yeah. Uh, but I have the, my tennis coaches. I wasn't quite sure what to do for them. <laughs> Whew, that was tough. So we so you, figured, you didn't buy a basket of balls or something well, because like we get all that stuff. For get it. Free. Yeah, it's already all, there. All our <laughs> tennis stuff comes. I mean, last week we had this great holiday. Let's get them a gift card. One of them I did. Yeah. So um, one is not he would take the gift card and we he would never see it and oh, money really? would never get used. So we had to do something a little bit more creative with him. Um, but last week we did a um, a holiday. It's called um, um, holiday. Uh, tennis camp for our kids and it's a big thing Santa Claus comes out the kids are in doing drills and but one of the best things about it is uh, uh, is sponsored by the tennis warehouse and and a start the star family and uh, they um, they usually put this whole big thing in the kids there's food and the kids the the high-end kids come out all the coaches from around the city come out yeah. and work with the kids yeah. but we get the most incredible tennis outfits oh, because yeah? with the tags and everything <laughs> it's like a little table a swap me kind of thing so we clean up every year with That's tennis cool. outfits so cool. I got some adorable tennis wear for next year and um, we are um, going to next year I think we're going to be doing our league Mm, we will be ready to start playing in like our the kids' league or no, the, the, the adult league. We don't have our own hey, league. Is Margie is Margie going to be a part of that? Um, we'd like to have Margie. Margie is actually on Facebook Live. Margie, we love <laughs> to have you because Margie's a really good I know tennis you player. tell me, you tell me. So it would be yeah. nice to see her out there doing her thing. Yeah. So we, uh, my coach told me, um, our t- coach told me the other day that I think y'all got guys are ready. We're going to start pairing you up for doubles. Uh-huh. And so that's, that's pretty good. Cool. That sounds exciting. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. Yeah. And what else happened with our tennis? Oh, our kids actually were in a a, a video mm-hmm. with Common. Oh. He did a, a a program on ESPN um, interviewing Serena. Oh, and uh, so then on the court, our kids, a lot of our kids were there, and on the court, so the kids are standing behind Common, and yeah. he's talking about strong black women and Serena being a strong tennis player, yeah. and it's really really cool. So That's that good. aired on uh, ESPN. So it aired already. It aired already. I can uh, send you over the clip. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, it's I'd called it. um, in depth. What is it called? I think it's called in depth. In depth, I think, in depth. and it's on. Uh, but I'll send you over the link. Yeah, uh, so I'd love to see cool. that. And so know, he did a I video. I like those programs. Yeah. So our kids are moving up, and that's one good. of our little girls, she um, has just finished the tennis junior tennis orange bowl. He's second runner up. Very nice. In the country. Very nice. Yeah. So Very we're nice. proud of our kids. They're doing their thing. Well, it looks like you're uh, you're raising another patch, of, another batch of Serena and. And, and Venus. Venus's, yeah. which is important. Yeah. We gotta, you know, we're doing the basketball thing. We got to do the same thing with all the other sports. Uh, Deshaun, if you're on upstream, you actually need to to keep it from breaking up. You need to actually purchase the uh, the subscription. I think that's why it's breaking up. Um, if you're on, but if on Facebook Live, the signal may be low. So <laughs> today, our show. Yes, is, tell us about today's show. Crystal. We're going to because we need to be prepared. Uh-huh. So we're going to um, talk about networking with a purpose. Mm, very good. And a goal very good. and an intention for 2017. So we're not going to network just to network. We're not going to go to events just to show up there and hang out with people. No. We're doing it for a purpose. We're doing it for a purpose, and, and we're understanding that networking is really investing in your future. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned to network uh, years and years ago. There was a book called Success Runs in Our Race, and it was by Dr. George Frazier. Mm-hmm. And Dr. George is, Dr. Frazier is a networking guru. guru. And I went to a couple of his uh, seminars when he came to Los Angeles. He's out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And I was just blown away. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of patterned my early networking after his philosophies. Mm-hmm. And then over the years, I've it's been it's evolved. Um, I am known to some people as a uh, people collector. <laughs> so, I like that. That's a new one. That's be, a new one. Yeah, so I'm always meeting because it comes natural to me. <laughs> So I'm always meeting people, and um, so people go, 
Crystal has to know somebody, so they'll start <laughs> calling me. So even Sharon Evans, she was telling somebody the other day I was at the Black uh, Christmas party, yeah. and she goes, you would be amazed at the people she knows. <laughs> she goes, you just call anybody, just call her. She knows somebody <laughs> that knows somebody. <laughs> so, uh, so that, you know, and that's some of what was in the, in the, in his philosophy is meeting people because one of the things you have to build your network before you need them. That's true. That is true. Right. And you know what's amazing? That's the same thing we used to teach when we're doing um, job search and job training. You got to build that network before you need them. Before you need them. Yes. Right. Because you're in a panic when you need them and you can't think straight. So you really have to uh, start when you're meeting people. You don't know if it's for the now or it's for the later. Right. 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 So there are certain techniques in order to do that. And a lot of people I know, you know, are very uncomfortable going into a space and walking up to someone and just having conversation or, you know. But, you know, there was years and years ago. I don't know. Have you ever heard of CEO space? CEO space. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, kind of a networking, and they're around. They have is different chapters. Is it online? Chap- is it online? It's online, but no, in person as well. It was pretty big. I don't know if it's as big as it used to be, mm-hmm. but one of the things that I uh, that I did like about them was mm-hmm. when they met people, yeah. their f- first question was, "How can I help you?" Mm-hmm. And I like so I kind of incorporated that because it you. You're taking you. it away from yourself, right? It it's about you, yes. it welcomes you, and you know what do you do, and how can I help you? Right. And then at that point, they are letting you know what they do, and then you can see how it fits within. Like yeah, you like that, huh? I like that, right? Because when you go to a networking event, people are kind of guarded. They're going, oh, yeah, they're going to be asking me stuff. You know, I don't want to give them anything. But if you ask them, how can I be of help to, to you. you. Now they're dropping that guard down. Oh, okay, okay. Right, because Here's it's not you about you, exactly. it's about them. And most like people that. are very open to talking That's about a self, neat right? strategy, Crystal. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So how can I help you? What you know, what is it that you're doing? Yeah. And because eventually you're gonna get yours anyway, because exactly. that's the karma, right? But is putting them in a position, one, to talk about what they do wow. and what their possible needs may be. Right. I like that. You like that, isn't it better? All right. How can I help you, Felicia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a better way of doing networking. Like so I've incorporated that. So generally, I listen to people yeah. and let them tell me what they want. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, we get to talking. And then, you know, in there, you can interject what yeah. you're doing. And then you actually get a back and forth conversation mm-hmm. going versus someone just pitching something to you because after a while I know for me I, I blank out yeah. you know if it's just a come at me because yeah. I got this and this and this and yeah. this and this but you know there I, I already know there's no reciprocity right. in it and also with that being said with that strategy and that approach that canned speech that people always prepare with, which they call the elevator pitch right you don't necessarily have to have that ready or get nervous about delivering it. Right. Because now you know you're there for that person to help that person. So then once it's your time to uh, um, to, to provide them with information that they need, it's going to come from the, the heart. It's going to come from the it's gonna heart. Come from the it's going to come from the heart. It's going to come from and the heart. And you won't have to think about it. You won't have to plan that speech, do the pitch. Mm-mm. It's going to come from the heart. And it's going to be genuine yes. and authentic. So at that like point, that. you're starting because... It's about building relationships yeah. because you can't walk up to someone you just met mm-hmm. and start saying, I need you to do this and yeah, this and this. Yeah. I got to get to know you. Yeah, exactly. Right? I, I just can't. But, yeah. but I have to. And because I don't know whether it's you're going to help me or someone, someone that you else. know yeah. that's going to help me. Yeah. But we need to talk about building a relationship with one another before mm. you can, especially if you're going to go ask for money or you're mm. going to ask for a job. Yeah. I'm like, why would I give you a job? Who yeah. are you? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because we haven't had any conversation with each yeah. other to get to know each other. I like that. Yeah. So. so for 2017, that will be my strategy. Okay. How can I help, <laughs> help you? you? Because we come with value, <laughs> yes, right? So yes. everyone comes with some sort of value. Yes. So you want to uh, be able to say, well, maybe I can't help you. And if I don't know someone, if, if I can't, then maybe I can help have reach out to someone that I know that, that can they help can you. help you. Right. I like that. So I that's, like that a that's lot. the, uh, that's the premise of that. So, 
to me, the definition of um, of networking is building one's connections, mm -hmm. right, and building a relationship. And the more connections you have, the more abundance that, that comes along with those connections and the more things get done. And the stronger that network, and the strong, that network becomes. Right, and the stronger that network becomes. Yeah. And um, economically and personally and a prof professional success is based on who you know or who knows you. Mm, that is true. Because, you know, in this world where it used to be when we uh, went job hunting, let's say when those that, that if you're in in the um, the employee status, status of life, mm -hmm. you were able to submit applications yeah. in person. Yeah. You went to go meet the person that mm -hmm. was at the desk, yeah. you know, the receptionist. They got to see you, mm -hmm. got to see how you carried yourself, right? right? So it's a little more hands-on. Right, right. Well, in today's world, uh -huh. you don't net. It's Everything is mm -hmm. online. Online, online social media. Online social media, which has taken the personal away yeah. and has made it very sterile. Mm -hmm. So you're not meeting me. You're me, meeting my, you're meeting my paper. <laughs> <laughs> you're, meeting, you're meeting what's on paper, yeah. which doesn't have a life to it. Right. It's just words that you yeah. put on a paper to meet certain needs. And, and where that came into effect was... Um, as a nonprofit, Recycling Black Dollars, we get a lot of our our sponsorship from corporations. Mm -hmm. So over the last, I don't know, five years or so, everything has gone online. Mm -hmm. And so some of our sponsors that have been sponsoring us for years and years, the old brass that was there, they've retired. Mm -hmm. So we, so those were our relationships. Right. And, and when you're looking for money, it's about a relationship, exactly. right? Because they're really investing in you, yeah. the person, right. not you, the organization. Right, right, right. Um, and so without those relationships, nonprofits are having a hard time finding yeah. funding and getting funded. Yeah. So we got denied by a funder that had been a funder or that had been a, sp a sponsorship or a sponsor of ours for like 20 something for a years long time, yeah. and our approach was let's email them and say you know what we need to sit down and have a meet yeah. because obviously from my proposal you couldn't get a real feel for what we do. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure we're having that conversation. Yeah. One, we're finding out what your criteria are. Mm -hmm. And two, you're learning what we've been doing from us with enthusiasm mm -hmm. versus it on a paper. And right. so after one of them, we had the meeting, yeah. they're like, wow, I didn't know you guys were doing that. That's amazing. Right? And that's what you usually hear from a sponsor or a client or someone to that effect. Or even an investor. If yeah. you're looking for an investor. I didn't know you guys did that. Right, exactly. How many times have people come up to you and said, Gilbert, I didn't know you did that. Exactly. As a matter of fact, this past week, I was dealing with some, uh, some contractors, a prime. Uh -huh. Four of them, mm -hmm. and they all said the same thing to me after I sent them my statement of qualifications. They go, what? even Palais, Richard right, Palais exactly. said the same thing. He said, I'm looking at you in a totally different light. I didn't know you did these things. I didn't know you were aware of this and you're so strong in this area. You know, and that's exactly what it is. Right, exactly. People don't know because we're so multifaceted. Yes. We do so many different things. Yes. So if they catch us in a space where we're speaking or um, or doing a class on a particular subject, yeah. they think that's our area of expertise. Right, right, right. But you and I both have a very extensive uh, experience and skill set. Exactly. So I even get it. And everybody pretty much knows that my business started with, with QuickBooks and, mm -hmm. and, and accounting. Mm -hmm. So in a certain space, that's what people know me about, exactly. know me for, right? Exactly. Then in other spaces, people have only heard me speak mm -hmm. at different events or if they've seen me as the co-director of Recycling yeah. Black Dollars or I've done a workshop and somebody's told them. So they And I'm talking business development and mm -hmm. business plan. Yeah. So I was at a um, at a, at a an event, one of the round tables, one of the black voice round tables. Mm -hmm. And so Sharon, I was introduced as the, if you need to get your business, your financials together, mm -hmm. Crystal is the person that does. And the lady yeah. came up, she goes, 
I had no idea that you did that. Yeah. I was like, Cause really? Because you probably only see it as a business plan or right, recycling. Right, exactly. Black dollars. And, dollars. and, <laughs> and we think, you know, it's so important for our, our um, uh, websites. Most people go to your website one time. Yeah. Unless you're driving them to your website, they've been there one time, and That's they have. It. And and for a business website, it's not. It's unlike an Amazon yeah. or an eBay yeah. or or something of that nature. You have no really no other reason to go there unless exactly. you're looking for a phone number that you don't have, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. other than that, they would not be able to go see what your services are mm-hmm. unless you're marketing and promoting your website. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody's on your Facebook, and not everybody's on social media. Yeah. Uh, we don't use LinkedIn the way it's supposed to be used mm-hmm. because your LinkedIn is a place, your resume, your business resume, yeah. and it's, it should be kept up to date. You know, we should do a workshop on that, Chris. I think so. We should do a workshop yeah. because I know you got strong expertise in that area. So let's do that. Yeah, we let's can do, do that, that because I think we got to be able to use, and that's part of the networking. Your LinkedIn mm-hmm. is a way, and you can make it live. Yeah. Because you can keep adding content to mm-hmm. it that people will see who you are and the things that you're interested yeah. in and how. And maybe, you know, in 27 thing is, how can I help you? Yeah, exactly. That could be there your you the content. How can I help there you? Everybody you reach out, especially those of us that are in business. Yeah. How can I help you? Let me Tell me a little bit about you and your yeah. business. That's going to be our theme for two days. Yes. How can I help How can can I I help help you? you? So that's some of the things. So today we're going to, um, we have some young men, college age young men that are about to graduate. Uh, Some of them have graduated and some of them are about to start their life. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to talk about networking today because they need to start building their network and they need to have a strategic plan to do that. Do you think perhaps we should take a break right now? I think that would be great. Back to that. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So we'll go ahead and take a break. You're on the business zone with Crystal and Gilbert, the small business paramedic. Okay. Hello. Meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186.
So we're back on the business zone, and uh, we're here with uh, Crystal and Gilbert, and uh, we've got some special guests in the studio today. Uh, uh, Crystal, so we were talking earlier. So we were talking, and one of the reasons that uh, I thought the show would be apropos, one, for us uh, as business people, but also um, our guests today are college uh, graduates or to-be graduates, and they're getting ready to start their work uh, careers, and it's all about relationships. Relationships, Relation, that's correct. Relationship. Because when you came out of college, how, how did that go when you went to look for a job? You know, when I came out of college, I had already established my network. Okay, good so job. So that network was very great. For, as a matter of fact, what I did, I stayed in, in college an extra year. Oh, was it the strategy to continue that to... That was a strategy. Good strategy. Because with that, with that extra year, I was able to build alliances with the professors. Okay. See what I mean? Right. And also what happened, I kind of didn't finish out the year because I got an opportunity. I got a business opportunity in Mississippi. Ah, yeah. okay. So, but, but, yeah, that was good. That was good. And, and that's what's important. So, um, <clears throat> and that's what we're going to talk about today is establishing, and even for business owners, before oh, yeah. you start that business, you oh, yeah. need to uh, already have established oh, your yeah. network so that when you need someone to help you with your business plan, if you just got the concept, right. then you need to lay out your team of individuals that's going to help you move you forward so you don't get stalled out. With and also, lack of information. <clears throat> you want to let your clients, your potential clients, know what you're getting ready to do, what pain you're getting ready to solve in the marketplace. Exactly. So then they can say, well, you know what? I have that pain. Or no, I don't have that pain. But I have a family member who has that pain who you can help. Exactly. You see what I mean? So then the referrals start building up. And, and right before you need them. Before so you again, need we're going to do that. Yeah. So we're going to uh, talk about a book today that I read a couple years ago that was referred to me by uh, the pre uh, CEO of um, of um, it was one of not FedEx. It was actually um, it's the one with the brown UPS. UPS. And so he had I was at a meeting and he had suggested that everyone read a book called Never Eat Alone. Oh. And Never Eat Alone was written by Keith Ferrazzi. And the book is about a creating and establishing relationships and building or well, networking and then building and establishing relationships. You know, Crystal, I've never read that book, but uh, after you mention it today and we have it here as part of our handout, mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to check out that yeah, book. Yeah, it's a really, really amazing book. So I'm going to introduce our guest, and then we're going to have a conversation about what it will take for them to move themselves in their career, and we're going to use it along with Never Eat Alone. Make sure we don't eat alone today. Right, exactly. <laughs> so the very first guest is very near and dear to me because he's my nephew. All right. Hey, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is Trenton Graham, and we're so proud of him. So Trenton, when he was in eighth grade, he already knew he wanted to go to college. Oh, yeah, definitely. And he had it all planned out. And the year that uh, two years before, when he was filling out his op applications, his mom, my sister Mona, we didn't really have to do anything. He took care of all of it himself. So he was really working hard to accomplish what he wanted after he got out of high school. That's so he good. had a plan. He had a strategy. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure he keeps that plan and strategy in place for when he gets out to the working world. Right. And then the other young man sitting here, he's very near and dear to me because he's like my other nephew. <laughs> he is Trenton's best friend. I think they met in... Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Wow. So look at that relationship that's yeah. gone the distance. Yeah. They're both 22 years old. Yeah. And so for uh, for the last 20 something years, they have been behind, got each other's back. Right. So uh, and Julian, he went to his his career was a little interesting in the beginning. He had to find yeah. the right place. But again, through strategy mm -hmm. and planning, because he knew exactly what he wanted to do. And so you went to Ball State. Ball State. Yep. And as you can see, he's a pretty big guy. So he was playing football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, but he didn't want that to define him. So he didn't have the goal that I'm going to play, going to college to play football at, or to go in the NFL. Mm -hmm. He had a plan. And if that happened, he would have been pleased with right. that. But that right. wasn't the only plan that he had. So football was plan B. Yes. I like well, that. 
Sort of. Sort of. Plan A, plan a slash B. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With a backup. <laughs> With a backup. <laughs> With a backup. So, and you have to be that way when you're talking about pro sports, right? Because right. you know, you never know. You got to give your all. Never know. Right. You never know if you're going to be that person that they're going to pick up yeah. or not. Or, or so, are you going to be cut? Right. So right. you can't be that one. That can't be your only yeah. uh, plan and goal because right. <laughs> you might get disappointed. Yeah. So, Trenton, tell us a little bit about you. Okay. And... Okay, so um, like she said, I always wanted to go to college. It was actually um, something my parents always told me that will happen, not, you know, if you want to. It was always you will go to college. So it was up to me to determine what college I wanted to go to. So they told you you got to go to college, and you said you always wanted to go to college. Mm -hmm. What is it about college that made you want to go? Um for me, it was going, moving out my parents' house, actually trying to find myself as my own person. Right, right. Um, sometimes you look at college on TVs mm -hmm. and it's portrayed as yeah, something. a um, certain way. Yeah. yeah. And it's something like that sometimes, yeah. but it's totally different other right, times. Right, right, right. Um, so I think that um, being so ambitious um, really got me to that point. That's good. So after college, uh, I actually started working for uh, the recreation center mm -hmm. Um and I was an intramural sports official, um, and I moved my way up in that um, area where I became a program assistant, um, and now I'm at the University of Houston um, as a grad assistant mm. in the intramurals department. Very good. Um, so it's been fun uh, these last couple of years, ever since I graduated high school, yeah. uh, moving around a whole bunch of different experiences. <laughs> um, but a lot, of, a lot of things that I've learned from, and I'm happy to take forward moving on. Yeah. So he's learning from his experiences. So he graduated from the University of Dayton, or what is it, Dayton University? Yeah, yeah, University of Dayton. University of Dayton in Ohio, which was a different experience all by its little lonesome. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> he's a California boy. <laughs> and uh, the weather was different. The people were different. The culture yeah. was different. Yeah. And so. Just out, of cur oh. just out of curiosity, what was the population in terms of black people in that area? Uh, well, I lived in Dayton. So it was funny. Uh, when I first said I was going to go there, all my uncles was like, oh, Dayton? Oh, yeah. I remember Dayton. I used to swing by Dayton. Yeah. I passed through. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I would say it was 50-50. Really? Um, yeah. It was a dying city, though. You can definitely oh. tell that. And the school was basically um, the middle of the town. Yeah. Um, and one side was uh, the richest, mm -hmm. one of the richest white areas in the country. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it was all boarded up houses. Yeah, like Aleppo, right? <laughs> right. So when I first got there, I was like, oh, I don't know if this was the place for me. But then I saw the other side of town. I was like, oh, wow, this might not be the place for me for a whole other different reason. But um, it was interesting. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And and date, uh, University of Houston, why did you choose that one? Uh, I wanted to get another experience. Uh, so I moved out to the Midwest um, for the snow, actually. Uh, learned I did not like snow. So, um, <laughs> How long did it take you to figure it out? Uh, probably the first month. <laughs> yeah, see, for me, it took me 13 years. Oh, so <laughs> I was a slow learner. Yeah, yeah I learned immediately. Um, so uh, with the job type of job I had, there was only a certain amount of schools that had the position open. Yeah. Um, so I just focused my um, my efforts to the south. Yeah. Um, and Houston was one of the places that caught my eye. Uh, I was accepted, and it was pretty early in the process, so yeah. I was pretty lucky. That's good. Um, accepted position, got accepted into the grad school, and I was set by April. Good. Yeah. Now, how much, what was the cost of education for grad school there? Uh, ooh, the cost is, I think, around thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, but actually, the position I have, they're paying for my grad school. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That is great. Yeah. That is great. I wish I had access to that because yeah. <laughs> back in my, I'm still paying for my loan right now, mm -hmm. and it's it's crucial. Yeah, it was one of those uh, decisions freshman year actually at the University of Dayton. Um, the people from the rec came over and said, if you want a job, uh, please, we're looking for people, uh, intramural officials, uh, just building uh, attendance, anything. Wow. And uh, I went to his office, talked to him about it. He was like, well, this is an opportunity where you could actually get free grad school. Wow. And I was like, doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Officiating intramural? He was like, yeah. So 
um, I said, I'm all in for that plan. That is we great, worked together man. to get there. So That is great. See, when you graduate from grad school mm-hmm. and you enter into the world, whether you're going to enter entrepreneurship or workmanship where you mm-hmm. become an employee, you're going to truly, truly appreciate that that aspect where you don't have to pay back that loan. Mm. You're going to appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Because a lot of college students start out in debt, which is really mm-hmm. kind of sad mm-hmm. because, you know, you still are starting your life. And, you know, that's the first debt that you're going to incur. And it really shapes which, how you make your decisions. Which for is you're an work. awful way to do it. Yeah, it's a horrible way to, to and, job hunt. <laughs> and it sticks with you for a long time. Yeah. And yeah, there are adults that are, you know, well, in their 50s, 60s, went to school. In fact, here's how incredible it is that there are people that went to school in the 60s and the 70s that are still paying for their loan and their degree is no longer valid Mm -hmm. because everything has changed. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything is being done different. I'm kind of close to that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kind of close to that because uh, I started uh, community community college back in 86. I graduated with my master's in 89, I think, 89. And I'm still paying for that thing. Yeah. I'm and, still paying, and I'm nowhere close to end, finishing. Yeah, it's, it's like crazy. How come you didn't get into the forgiveness one? That when I tried, but they tell me it's too late. I start. I applied too late. Too late? Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, because he forgave that in his early first. See, first. what happened in my case, and, you know, maybe, I don't know if you're there yet, but I want you to think about it this way. When you get a, a loan, a student loan, mm-hmm. depend. You want to be careful of who the lender is because their purpose is to jack you. Mm-hmm. Their purpose is to put you into these loans that you can't get out of. Because my loan was supposed to be a 10-year loan. Uh-huh. Okay. It started in 86. How many wow. years is that now? Wow. Over 30. Wow. And, and you I know still what can't pay, finish paying for it. Oh, that's crazy. Because they put you in it and then they creep up the interest rate on you and you don't even know no. what it is. Because w- when, when you're going to college, you're excited about just getting some money. Right. So you take all these loans <laughs> thinking, hey, you know, I'm going to get a job. And you never get that job to take care of. <laughs> Not that because you got to pay rent. Yeah. You want to buy a house. A you get car. married. You got children. It's just, it's just it's endless. That's ridiculous. Over 30 years. 30 and years? I still, I still owed him at least 40 grand oh my god at least 40 grand that's how they jacked me so i'm telling you man be careful yeah, <laughs> so julian tell us your story uh, <laughs> got pretty interesting i always knew i was going to college that was never anything out that was debatable uh come from a long line of educators yeah uh, my grandparents as well as my father um out of high school i got accepted to every school i applied to but um i wanted to play football and although I could have went somewhere, my mom paid or took out loans, I decided to go to El Camino College. Mm-hmm. Um, went there for two years. Very rocky recruiting process. <laughs> <laughs> but finally landed at Ball State with a full uh, Division One um, athletic scholarship. Hey, that's um, good. Currently, I am uh, just finished all of my classes. Uh, okay. Found out yesterday I finished with a 3.6 this semester. Wow. Congratulations. That's good. Fantastic. That's good. Yes, sir. And then uh, this spring, um, before I graduate in May, I will be completing an internship, a culminating uh, internship for my degree here in Los Angeles. Okay, uh, so you come back the, home. Yeah, uh-huh. had to get out the Midwest. All especially right. Where's the degree? Time. At USC or? At Ball State University. Oh, uh, uh, okay. But my internship is at Kanema Fitness. Uh, I'll be working with corporate wellness oh. um, in downtown L.A. Oh, okay. Fantastic. That's great. Congratulations. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, I saw you put that on Facebook the other day. That's fantastic. That Your mom great. would be very happy to have you back in town. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, man. That's great. So how was the experience in, uh, that was uh, Idaho? Indiana. Indiana? Indiana. Yeah, how, Indiana. Was, how was that? It was a roller coaster for sure, trying to balance um, Division One football. That's like having a full-time job. Yeah, you know, it is. More than 40 hours a week that we dedicate yeah, um, is, to man. getting game ready yeah. and training and stuff like that. Um, then the whole culture and the weather is all extreme. Yeah. You know, being a California <laughs> yeah. kid, wow, uh, extreme cold, having yeah. to play football in negative thirty degrees. Ooh. Oh wow, that's you know? deep. And then in the summertime, it's one hundred and two with mm-hmm. humidity. Mm-hmm. You know, so just the whole uh, culture. And then it's a small town too. I have yeah. to take some time to adjust to the small town yeah. atmosphere. You got to deal with all the, that craziness. Yes, exactly. How was the school itself, though? Uh, I liked it. I okay. liked it. I, I met a lot of genuine people. 
Um, a lot of people in my major specifically really care about, you know, the students and our success. Um, one of my closest, um, I guess, alliances would be my counselor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she's done, you know, above and beyond to make sure me and my classmates all get to where we need to go um, after college and that's good and built that's some good. very very positive relationships so you guys actually both of you um and i know trenton has and i know you have have started developing that core of your uh advisors and your network and have built relationships with them mm -hmm. so being able now to be able to take that into when you start working for someone and if afterwards uh, either one of you have any entrepreneurial ambitions ambitions uh, I think, yeah, we definitely do. Um, it's just getting the money first to fund those um, ambitions um, and having that idea that we want to, you know, put everything towards yeah. um, to make that dream come true. But I definitely don't plan on working for someone for the rest of my life. Okay. Now, do you already have the idea in uh, mind that... So many I, ideas yeah. uh, going through my head. And, uh, so, yeah. This guy, too. Um, we always talk about it in our core group of friends. Yeah. We're always talking about different ideas. It's just um, we're trying to put ourselves in that position where we can say, you know what, we want to yeah. move on that idea. Right. Let's go. See, the good thing about it is you're lucky to be in a circle of resources like Crystal and I. Mm -hmm. Because we've been down that road. We've stumbled a lot. And, and part of what this show is all about is to help entrepreneurs who probably have stumbled a little, a little bit or they haven't stumbled enough yet. Mm -hmm. And we have stumbled so many times that we're teaching them, we're educating them from all our stumbles so that they don't have to stumble as many times as we, right. we do. So with you guys, it's great because now you're coming in fresh and you're looking at it from the perspective that, hey, this is where I want to go. I want to go down this path. What do you think, Crystal? Right. What do you think, Gilbert? You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we've been there. And even if we haven't been there, we know someone who have yeah. been there. So we can point you in that direction and say, hey, don't take that road over there. That road is rocky. <laughs> yeah, that one is rocky. I mean? yeah. And even the idea, you know, that's something actually what I do is I help uh, my clients and customer uh, clients uh, fester out or f create the feasibility of mm -hmm. what the idea is. Yeah. And, um, and I'm going to say from working with so many people over the last 29 years, and I guess you would say the same thing, mm -hmm. don't worry about the money. Yeah. Create the idea yeah, yeah. because if the idea takes off, mm -hmm. then some money, money will come. Money so will it's come. really planning the business. Um, Gilbert is well. We both are because mm -hmm. I started my business 29 years ago, and, yeah. and it happens to be a coaching service business. So I really didn't need a, a, a influx of money. Right. All I needed was a computer and a right. phone. Right. So I and I was able to take my business. But Gilbert actually has a product, mm -hmm. and he has invested in that product up until now, yeah. getting it in investment ready mm -hmm. so that an investor will come along and, 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 and infuse money into it or be able to purchase the product and then he can go on to developing the next product. So exactly. we can't let the concept of not having the money at your fingertips right now mm -hmm. stop you. Right. I have so many businesses that I've helped that had no money. Mm -hmm. And they've been in business for the four, last four or five years right. or it just all panned out. Yeah. I mean, it, it just all worked its way out. And you guys are all starting uh, now. But I will say, and then this is my own personal experience, my first 15 years after college, I worked for someone and I used them as my university mm -hmm. because I watched how they ran mm -hmm. their businesses mm -hmm. and they were very successful businesses. Yeah. So that way I was to take that experience. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I was learning everything that I could learn so I could enhance my skill set. Mm -hmm. So when I did start my own business, I have a, a, a bag full of different tricks yeah. that I could use depending on what is going on in the economy at the time or what's going on or if a business if that business needs an infusion to evolve to the next level, mm -hmm. I have the skill sets to help uh, um, uh, make that that evolution take right. place. So I will say that it's important to as young adults to go to work for someone and then observe. So not just be an employee, observe what they're doing right. so that you can utilize, especially if it's successful, mm -hmm. you can utilize some of the same strategies. And if it's not successful, then learn, be able to identify what doesn't work and what does work. Right. 
Now, I'm not going to um, ask you guys right now on the spot which avenue you're thinking of taking because as, as an entrepreneur, ideas come to you by the minute. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So the one thing I would like to say, though, based on my experience, what you want to do with those ideas is to ascertain whether or not it's a service that you're thinking of providing or a product. Mm -hmm. That's very important to your success. If it's a service, chances are the funding aspect of that will be minimal mm -hmm. and it will cost you less. Mm -hmm. If it's a product, that could cost you hundreds of thousands or millions, depending on the product. Right. So you want to have a strong planning approach and a strong network behind that. Mm -hmm. So that's very important to know. The yeah. product, yeah. So when you come up with your ideas, you know, I mean, of course you want to do your non-disclosure agreements and all of that. <laughs> Make sure people don't, you know, borrow your ideas from you and don't give it back. <laughs> okay. I like that. Borrow, borrow. your ideas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so you want to push, you want to push it over here, you know, so we can kind of guide you like crystal mentioned earlier we can do a feasibility study on it to see how feasible it is and i'm not trying to educate you guys right now but one of the key things that i tell my clients that when they're trying to come up with an idea and they're trying to check feasibility you want to see if your idea or your product solves the pain in the marketplace yeah. mm -hmm. And if it solves the pain, are people willing to pay for you to solve that pain for them? Mm -hmm. right. if, if the answer to that is yes, then you know you're on a good start mm -hmm. with your idea. Yeah. So keep that in mind. And it, and if it's if it's relatable to what you do, so you're not so far outside. Yes, so yes. for you being in the health and mm -hmm. uh, industry, uh, the the physical therapists or the kinesiologists that actually created uh, the product, the KT tape. Right. You've seen, you've, I use it all the time when yeah, I'm playing. I've used it. Yeah, that's some amazing stuff. I don't know how it works, but I do know it works. <laughs> and 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 um and I've had friends that I've uh, I actually carry it in my tennis bag because you never know when you got to whip it out and mm -hmm. throw it on your knee or your yeah. arm or whatever yeah. it is going on. But I've actually had friends that have put it. She had a fallen arch, and she's like, I was like, here, try this tape, and she's like. And about a day later, I said, how is your foot? She goes, what foot? What's wrong with my foot? <laughs> <laughs> so those individuals that created that product, yeah. off the chain. What is, what is it called? It's called KT tape. It's a KT. kinesiology. It's like, um, it's better than an ace bandage or yeah. an ace wrap mm -hmm. because you it's, it's all done by the stretch of the tape. And, they, and there's YouTube videos on how to put it on, depending on where you got to put it on your so body. So it makes a pain go away. It makes it... it I don't know what it does, but yeah, I guess so. You know, I need I need that. You need that. Because my fiance, you know, she has her pain problems right, yeah. and on any given day she the pain flares up and is like she doesn't know what to do and then I'm there going, Okay, what do I do? How you know, how do I help you? And she gets irritable. So that would be really yeah. They helpful. um, if you watch the Olympics every, and that's probably when they took off because every athlete yeah, is like, that the black is that the black strip? is the black is pink yeah. is orange is yellow is all kinds See of see a lot of the uh, the beach volleyball girls yes on yes, yes on the yes, shoulder yes, they've right. had soldier uh, so, yeah, yeah the young a lot of guys on my team they use it for their shoulder issues. Um, yeah, more than any other part of the body. Let me know where I can get it. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it today. Yeah, you can get that at CVS, oh, yeah? or Target, or Walmart. Yeah, sporting goods, sporting places. goods stores anywhere. It's like uh -huh. twenty bucks, and you get like, huh? uh, you get a roll, and there's some. I think there's like seventeen strips in it, oh, and then wow. you watch the videos to see wherever your pain. I gotta is. get it. So that's a business. I mean, that they were physical therapists. Mm -hmm. That's by trade what they are, yeah. and then that was an, an offspring. So of, they invented that. Those Guys? He invented that. It was yeah, wow. one of the, the the doctors that would the actually I think he was a physical therapist. I don't think he was a Can doctor. Can you imagine if that were you guys? Right, man. I would be sitting pretty <laughs> right now. <laughs> and you have the network because you're in the sports industry. You've been in this, so you'll just uh, you'll start establishing those networks. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, and you've been there. So we usually we solve a pain based upon an experience that we've had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's how my business evolved. Was when I started as an entrepreneur, everyone. I knew worked in corporate America or the county or federal or whatever and when I told them I was leaving my corporate job I was like are you nuts <laughs> no I'm not nuts because I can't do that anymore yeah. but when I did it 
you know, I didn't have the advisors to guide me through the process. So I had to learn on my own and I had to do a lot of research to avoid some of the pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Um, But so this business came out of that because I saw to uh, prevent other businesses from or business, new business owners from going through that process. I could help eliminate the the mistakes or the experiences that I had that you'll make your own. Because that's just part of it, and that's part of the learning process. Yeah. But being able to create, uh, be able to have someone to help guide you though through some of the stuff that's not necessary to go through again. Right. Yeah, that's good. So that's really good. That's so, good. Um, so, so what are some of the ways that you guys um, formulate your network and uh, to make it work for you? How do you guys go about doing that? Uh, I was really lucky. My teacher at the University of Dayton. Um, uh, Dr. Peter, uh, Peter Teitelbaum, he really, that was one of the first things that he told us. He said, first, they're going to look for the results, as in the company, uh, when they're hiring you, first they're going to look at the results. Um, but then everything after that is who you know mm-hmm. um, and who knows you. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of our first projects w- was to actually call five people, five different people, cold call them um, in the industry and just introduce ourselves, ask questions, and from that, our relationships with those type of people uh, built. Get established. Tremendously, yeah. Wow. Um, and so maybe freshman year, he made us do this with 20 people. Mm-hmm. Um, so out of that 20 people, I'm probably stuck with around seven. Mm. Um, and throughout my years in college, he kept making us do it. And uh, that's how I got a LinkedIn and added all those people on there. So, that's great. Um, he really helped me. So when talking about networking, I... All the credit goes to that guy because he really opened the, my eyes. That's good. Um, because I can't just do it with the work I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, as silly as that seems, you actually have to know people, yeah. um, and they have to know you. Yeah, people people really do business with people like people that they know, like, and trust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, once you get those three down, you're good. I was telling Crystal the other day on my show here that. Um, I've had clients who contacted me after I did a workshop with them a year or two ago. I don't even remember who these people are, Mm -hmm. but it's because of that network. You know, you establish that network and you did or said something to them that they remembered. Right. Right. And then they call you two years later and say, hey, you know, I want this guy to help me with my business. I don't want anyone else. Mm -hmm. Or I want this woman to help me because she, you know. So it's amazing. It's amazing with what your 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 coach, your advisors, and all of those folks are trying to help you with. Yeah, it's phenomenal, man. You gotta you gotta cherish it. Yeah, and even yeah. if you're making them now, uh, you don't know when you're gonna utilize them. I had I spoke at an event a couple of weeks ago, a uh, m- month ago, and when the young lady uh, Facebooked me, she we connected on Facebook, and she. Oh, you know, she saw some of the posts that I was putting up. I'm pretty prolific on my Facebook. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she reached out and asked, would I speak at this event? And I'm going, do I know this person? Wow. But I had already made, when I set my goals for 2016, it was like, I'm going to say yes, because one of the yeah. things I wanted to do, I want to be uh, paid, yeah. uh, be a paid speaker. Yeah. So that means I need the experience yeah. behind me. So I said yes. yes. And so, I went on, uh, so when we got to talking, just about a week before, two weeks before, I said, what do you want me to talk about? <laughs> and so she told me networking. And I had just done another event that was a referral. Yeah. And I had done a three-day event, and it was about networking. I was like, okay, I got to do that. But then I was thinking, I don't know her. I don't know yeah. if I know her. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> Went on her Facebook. I saw we only had we had no mutual connections. Like, OK, that's interesting. Yeah. There's very few people or a few places that I go that yeah. I don't know somebody yeah. just because I've been collecting people that, for the last 20 some years. That's six degree and, of separation. Right. Right. And I'm a people collector. <laughs> so I'm thinking, how do I not know anybody here? This is blowing me away. So it's like, OK, what am I? Network and it, I was trying to formulate the speech and the the talk and thinking, oh my, I don't even. Okay, so I'll just go. So yeah. when I get there, so I don't know if I sent that energy because when I, when she walked into it, she goes, I know you don't remember me, uh-huh. and I know you're trying to been figuring it out. I hadn't put it on Facebook, hadn't done anything, uh-huh. and she goes. 
I was in a class of yours seven years ago. Mm. And she goes, and I remembered, I don't even know what I spoke about seven years ago, what mm-hmm. class it was. Mm-hmm. But she goes, I was in a class and I knew at some point I was going to have you do something for me or we were going to do something. That's amazing. And that's how it happened. And when I got there again, no one in the room did I know. Uh-huh. I didn't know, which is very unusual. <laughs> but I spoke on, but what she did do was she put a card before all her guests, and they were to put what were <clears throat> the challenges or the obstacles that was preventing them from becoming successful. Okay, mm-hmm. I can talk about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so that was what, it just came off the cuff, and yeah. they just did it. And out of that, I got another client, customer clients. I got a new a coaching client for uh, 2017 That's that amazing. came out of that. So you never know what those relationships are, when they're going to actually come together. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I know that Crystal is your aunt, mm-hmm. but do you know how famous she is? <laughs> Oh, do, you, yeah. do you know? Oh, she knows everybody. We go, we go places <laughs> together, okay? Yeah. And I walk into that room, and they're, oh, Crystal, Crystal. I'm going, hey, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody knows Crystal. <laughs> Every, I don't know anywhere that she can go that no one knows her. Mm. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. We went to this event down at um, LA Live. And uh, Damon John, Damon Shark yeah. from Shark Tank oh, was supposed to be there. And, oh, man, they were all over her. All the people in the room were all <laughs> over her. I'm going, how do you know these people? Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, man. So if you need a networker, man, <laughs> right here. Right here. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm riding on her coattails right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's just as famous in his space. Uh, Gilbert's area of expertise is uh, 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 helping people become certified, uh, minority certified business owners. Mm-hmm. And so he is very well known in that space. So <laughs> when he's not with me, people go, Gilbert is your co host. Oh, yeah, Gilbert is cool. So see, he's his own celebrity in his own right. They just don't tell him when he, I obviously, when he's in the room with him. <laughs> but they tell me. <laughs> but it's very important. So, uh, Julian, your network, how were, how have you been able to develop your network? Mine initially started from football. Just, okay. You know, intru- getting introduced to people, playing football, yeah. um, former football players. It's kind of like a fraternity with yeah. myself. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and then um, being at Division One, we take a lot of etiquette courses or networking classes mm-hmm. um, as, fe- as well as um, it being mandatory that we go to all the career fairs. Um, so football introduced me to a lot of a lot of people, as well as um, I've had some amazing teammates from high school to j- junior college, as well as at the D1 level. Um, this past semester, though, preparing for my internship, everyone um, in my in my major had an internship preparedness course, where we talk about um, how to network, how to work the room a little mm-hmm. bit, yep. especially at, yep. at health mm-hmm. fairs or different events. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, uh, th- I mean, that was a big focus of the class as well as creating a, link, a LinkedIn page, mm-hmm. um, cover letters, you know, things of that nature just yeah. to be able to communicate mm-hmm. with people, um, you know, at different places, whether in person or online and mm-hmm. create connections that way. That's and great. it's good because, you know, before we didn't have a LinkedIn no. and it really, you know, most of my my uh, network was developed without any social media aspect to it. So you guys are pretty lucky that you do have that. But I do use my LinkedIn because when I do want to find out and meet someone or I want to meet someone that I haven't met that I think would be very valuable within my network of me knowing them. Then I go to somebody that I know and I'll say, hey, can you introduce me to so and so and so and so? And then because, you know, my profile profile is there and I keep it up to date right. and I always whatever I'm doing, I always add it. Mm-hmm. And the show has been beneficial because I added the show every 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 week. Mm-hmm. And so people are actually getting, um, you know, they're able to see snippets of what we're doing and what we're talking about about yeah. so we actually have a bigger following on the show than actually are subscribing to the YouTube yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, I go to places people go oh yeah I just saw your show last night yeah. really but you didn't subscribe what's yeah. up with that <laughs> man <laughs> so that audience is what I want you guys to do for 2017 please subscribe to our stage the business zone and it's that's what it's called the business zone on YouTube with Crystal and Gilbert and we need your subscription because next year we want to monetize our uh, show and we also oh, we are do some great things for you small businesses. But 
We can't do it for you unless you, you subscribe to the program. We know who you are. We can reach out to you and we can provide you resources. So follow Crystal's lead and, and go subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to us. So you guys are actually in a better place than most of our business owners because yes. our business owners have no networks. That's true. They are in business and they've not learned this at That's all. That's true. Wow. Um, when they come to me and they're going, but I don't know anybody. Really? Mm -hmm. Nobody, yeah. you know, nobody. And a lot of them don't tell other people yeah. what they're doing. Right. So nobody knows that. Uh, they don't know what people even in their own family. Yeah. I mean, how many people really know what your family members or your friends do for a living? Exactly. Because you never they never ask. Yeah. They just know they got a job mm -hmm. and they may know where they work, but they don't know what they do yeah. and whether or not there can be some synergy between your business or what you're doing in their business. And that's how you expect. See, that when, when I teach my workshops, Crystal, <clears throat> one of the things that I tell my clients is that you got to know who is in the room. That's the first question you want to ask. Who is in the room? And if you don't know who is in the room, then you got to go find out who is in the room. Go introduce yourself. And like Crystal said earlier, you know, what? how can I help you? Yeah. How, how can, can I, I help you? Instead of going to them, and trying to, to get them to subscribe to you or purchase your service or your product, ask them, how can I help you? And then that will drop their guard down mm -hmm. instead of thinking that, oh, this person's trying to sell me something. Oh, he's got his elevator pitch ready. No, mm -hmm. how can I help you? And then all of a sudden they're going to go, wow, this dude is here to help me. Well, this is what I need. I need this and I need this. And before you know it, now you start telling them about how you can help them and how that works, and mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. Yep. So for 2017, Crystal, is how that's can gonna, I help? That's going to be our theme. How can I help you? How can I help? Yeah, you? I have to choose my theme song the whole bit for next year. But yes. yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> my my theme song last year was uh, "Living My Life Like It's Golden." I might move that into 2017. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but I, I'll feel it in another few days. When it may I be a follow-up, right? A follow -up. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was the book Never Eat Alone. And you guys should really catch, get that book. There was a couple of very, uh, uh, very profound books that I read in my early career. One was by Dr. George Frazier, uh, Success Runs in My Race in our race, and it was about what we do and the people that are doing what we do in our space, and a phenomenal book. But Dr. Jo George uh, is uh, Frazier is a phenomenal networker, um, got connections all over the world. He actually has a, um, a conference that happens annually called Power Networking, and last year we won I wanted you to go there, so this year I'm already signed up. So you can go and I'm going to get somebody else to sign up and you guys can go for free Sounds and good. then y'all can stay with Glenn <laughs> and it'll be yeah. cool because it's in Maryland. Right. So I'm going to work on who's coming so I can get you there, too. Okay. Um, but that's one of the things he brings people together, especially young people. He brings you together with some powerful people. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a sports agent oh, wow. that is very much a part of his network. Mm -hmm. And so I had already started talking to them about you. Oh, wow. And so they're uh, going to introduce you to him. So we got to get you there uh, in July. Uh, but one of the things that uh, uh, Keith Arazi, who is the author of Never Eat Alone, he talks about uh, when there's several points that need to take place when you're thinking of networking. And so these young men actually have started it. So one of the first one is the mindset. Being there by them being educated to think in that space that is who you know and who knows you right. is the very first factor that you need. Because if you're obsolete and you know, you're working in a closet and nobody knows what you're doing or why you're doing it, mm -hmm. nobody's ever going to support you. That's true. Mm -hmm. Never. And it could be you're down the line and you say, I've been in space. I had to give it up. I had to go to work because I'm like, I didn't know you did that. Mm -hmm. I could have helped you out, and especially job-wise when you're looking for work. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing since you don't have those personal relationships, those touchy feelings, because everything is by online yeah. as an application. Nobody yeah. knows who the heck you are. Yeah. So you got to be able, your reputation got to get there before your paperwork get mm -hmm. there. <laughs> and hopefully that's because somebody didn't take it. It's like, oh, so-and-so is submitting a resume online, but I need you to look at it when it gets here, right. not get buried in the 5000 resumes that you've gotten mm -hmm. and the other thing he talked about is becoming a member of a club 
So you have an affiliation with sports and football. Right. And so those are people are valuable. They're mm-hmm. very they're they're there's a huge value in who you know. You're a part of a fraternity. You wanna Plug your fraternity, oh, yes, my uh, brother. Alpha Alpha Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, fraternities are huge. Yeah. They are fraternities and sororities are and huge. powerful. And powerful. You know, the deltas are like off the chain. The capitals are off the chain. Mm-hmm. In fact, a, 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 a relationship that was I developed with a I was a Girl Scout leader, and she was a Girl Scout leader. So that's some number of years ago mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. she just reached out to me the fraternities and sororities they're creating a uh, a solidarity called the pack nine oh, yeah. and so that she's going to be working that i'm going to do some stuff with her to uh uh support the tennis program the oh, kid cool. program so yeah. we're going to work with them and that's good because they're all coming together to work together and mm-hmm. you know instead of everybody working in their own sil- silos yeah. and for African American people black people we got to come together we are we are we got to sure. unite there's no question about that it has to happen it has to happen um especially under that that's administration that's taking on place right on now. Yeah, yeah that's on the east coast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm right now in my own state of California, <laughs> my and, own country of and, California, and the far east, in the far east, <laughs> in the far west. That's the far east nut people out there. So, but um, but that'd be really, you know, that'd be great. So, one of the things he said is becoming a member of a club, mm-hmm. um, where you meet the people that are of a like-mindedness mm-hmm, yeah. and that are progressive and that want to move forward and that are all open because your whole networks are about helping each other. That's right. what the fraternity and sorority is about. Right. It's when you leave college, we're here for you. We got your back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, And that actually was Keith's second book is and Who w- Got Your Back. One thing I'd like to add to that, Crystal, which is really critical, informing a club or being a part of a club is good. But you also got to understand your core competencies. Yeah. You got to know what is it you're good at. Mm -hmm. Because being a part of a club and not having anything to contribute, Mm -hmm. it really doesn't help you. Mm -mm. So you want to know your core competencies. Like you guys are in the health field. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're in there. But what part of that do you do very well? Mm -hmm. And what value do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. So those are good things. And being able to accept that, I think a lot of people are so humble about what they do mm-hmm. that they never, you know, pro, uh, they never um, encourage or uh, their their talents right. is what do I do well? Yeah. This is what I do yeah. well. And you need to know that I exactly. do well. So it's patting yourself exactly. on the back. And, and when you do great accomplishments, you need to, one, celebrate yourself. Mm. Uh, more so than even somebody else celebrating you. And and just to take that a little farther, because a lot of entrepreneurs, they really don't get this because they might be able to identify their core competencies, but they don't see how that core competency can elevate them. You must be able to take your core competency and help your client transform themselves. If you can get them to transform from wherever they are. So let's say you just meet them. Let's say I just walk in this, into this room. You're at a certain level mm-hmm. when I came to this room. Mm-hmm. When I walk out of this room, you should be at a much higher level based on the information I shared with you, yeah. what I disseminated to you, mm-hmm. using my core competencies. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's what entrepreneurs need to understand as, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And even employees. And employees, too. I mean, you have too. to know what you're good at. And yeah. I, when I was working for someone, I wanted to make sure I was the most valuable person on the on, oh, in. Yeah the building oh, yeah. and so I made several decisions based upon that when I was in financial planning uh, I made sure that whatever there was to know about the processes of what we did uh, for our clients I had I knew everything if I if there was a problem I called mm-hmm. back to our home office I got it down in detail mm-hmm. to it became uh, uh, relevant everyone in the building was like go ask Crystal she knows so yeah. even after I left you know why yeah because you made them fall in love with you. <laughs> well, yeah, That's what it's got to be. <laughs> you got to be able to make either your, your fellow employees or your clients 
fall in love with you. Yeah, yeah so that they'll know. She the go-to person. Oh, yeah. And even after I left, oh, even yeah. after I left the company, people, new employees would come in and like, here, here's Crystal's number. Give her a call. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, guys, I'm not y'all's consultant. I'm not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what you want because, yeah. again, that's the relationship. And oh, people yeah. People know you and then they will refer to you oh, when yeah. they go to places. And if they got to build a team and you're in that space. They got to be a part I of I got to call team. you. I, I need you to come to my team to do what I need you to yep. do. Um, Felicia, our studio today, she's got a, a phone call a couple of days ago from Kathy Hughes. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that was her mentor. Oh, and She worked man. here years ago and she's going to come use the studio. Really? When? On Wednesday. Oh, that's a. That's I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's but amazing. that was a relationship she created yeah. years ago um, that is now coming to fruition. That's Someone amazing, respected Felicia. what she did uh, to utilize, you know, oh, want to yeah. support her now. And that that's what's amazing. important. We never know who's watching. Never us. know. We never know who is keeping track of our successes. And that's why in leaning on that topic about being a part of a club, when you're in that club, you want to behave as if people are always watching you, yeah. Yeah. even when you're by yourself. And that's why, you know, when I'm on radio shows or I'm teaching a class, I'm out there in the public, I'm on social media, I behave a certain way because you never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. Never, ever yeah. know. And here's a big one. And this one came, I, a friend of mine's, um, was is is starting a business or wants to start a business but he in the hair he's a hair he was a hairstylist but he wanted to create his own um beauty school but with the emphasis on teaching the students on how to get into the entertainment business because there's a big big money mm-hmm. as a stylist and a hairstylist and and the consultant the whole bit um he had been in that business for over 30 years. He had worked with Eddie Murphy. He had worked with Chris Rock, just everybody. I mean, I think he had told me when Halle Berry got her hair cut short when she was the, the short pixie look, mm-hmm. that was him. He did that. Oh, really? Um, oh, wow. So Congrats. when it came time for him to start his business, he didn't want to reach out to them. Why? I, I, I never understood it. He wanted to come successful to them and then ask for help mm. as opposed to asking them mm. to invest in who he was based upon their relationship. It's just like those folks who don't like to toot their own horn in the resumes or anything like that. Right. They go, oh, they'll know me. They'll, they'll know me. Out. They'll figure that out. But no, that you have forever. to be the one to toot yeah. your horn. And the other part of that is sometimes uh, is not to keep score, which means that we collect people or we make relationships but we want to keep them to ourselves mm-hmm. we don't want to share yeah. that relationship with yeah. anybody else yeah. because figuring that they're going to use them up and then yeah. it will be nothing for you yeah. but what happens is that you've already created the trust with them they will trust you if you're referring someone else to them again, and that, yeah. that, that becomes successful again I keep going back to my, my mantra if you make them fall in love with you, <laughs> there's no way they're going to fall in love with anyone else. Right. Because all the love they have is for you. You see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, so holding resources to yourself is not doing you any good. No, it isn't. You, 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 you should gotta share. share it. Right. You got to share yeah. it. I don't have a problem. You know, I, I have a uh, one of the philosophies that I work I work with for myself is when I'm networking, my mission, and that's the next step in Keith, is what is your mission? So my mission when I go out to an event is, one, let me hear what's going on. What are you doing? How can I help you? So that way I'm listening mm-hmm. to what they're saying, right? And then I'm going, hmm, okay, that might not work for me. But I go out with a top 10. I have top 10 people that I am networking for besides myself. So if I, they could be clients, they could be friends, they could be associates that I've just met. But if I can bring those two people together, Mm -hmm. then that's a great thing because there's two people doing business and with the synergy that can help each other. So I always go out with my top 10. So that's my mission. And that's why it is so key that when an entrepreneur or an employee is trying to establish their mission, they understand what their focus is because your mission is about your, what's your purpose? What is your purpose? Mm -hmm. Your purpose is here to solve a certain pain. 
And how are you going to solve that pain? Well, when you go into that room, your mission is to make connections, to do make all of those things. That's part of the purpose of your 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 your, your mission. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it, it is crucial that you combine those two and understand it. A lot of businesses don't understand their purpose. They don't understand their purpose. And if you don't understand your purpose, then you don't know your target demographic. You don't know how to market to them. You don't know how to get that desired outcome. Right. And again, people knowing what you do, knowing you and you knowing them. Oh, yeah. And the other thing that I've always worked with it was the ph- philosophy is that there's always a, a philanthropy part of what I do. So I always volunteer or mm-hmm. work with some organization. So in my early career, I was Girl Scout leader. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I met people from that arena because that's a vast network as mm-hmm. well. And then from there, I... Uh, met some individuals and I had learned to start to learn to ski and so I was doing the Girl Scouts and wanted to figure out how I was going to bring both of them together mm-hmm. so I wouldn't have to no one got left out right yeah. so I started taking them skiing and then I ran into a group uh, that had a program for kids to learn to ski and at the same time I could continue my skiing and so I brought those kids into that program but again now a vast number of people so when I would go out to network and big events and I didn't know anybody I had Girl Scouts I had kids that's always a great subject (laughs) and I'm always very passionate about that right See, that's another thing a lot of people don't know about Crystal she's in She's an amazing skier. So we're at the top of the the hour right now. So we're going to take another break. This is our final break. Uh, We've got 30 more minutes left in the show. So uh, this is the Business Zone with... Crystal. (laughs) And (laughs) Gilbert. (laughs) The Small Business Paramedic. So let's take a break. All (laughs) righty. Hello. Meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back-office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet-accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186. Welcome back to the Business Zone. Uh, this is Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. And Crystal was talking about some great things about network here. And uh, she's got some key points. And Crystal, you're talking about uh, the mission. Yeah, the having mission. Having a mission. Um, and we have our two wonderful guests, Trenton Graham and Julian Jackson. They're our new millennial entre- future entrepreneurs and, and, uh, corporations and empire 
builders and leaders. <laughs> you, know, you know, Crystal, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to ask this question. I know they're not there yet, but I always wanted to get a flavor of the millennials. Uh, how do you guys approach business? How do you see business? And uh, what does that mean to you guys, mm. being millennials? <laughs> Because we're old school. We're, you know, we're dinosaurs. We're a different <laughs> era. So you guys look at it differently. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially in the mo uh, more recent years, um, being more educated on politics and things like mm. that. Um, I feel like back then it was easier to start a business and actually make money from that um, business. Now it's like the big corporations. Um, of course, you can still make money with your small business now, mm -hmm. but it's... Um, feel like you have to build an empire mm. to actually compete with those big corporations mm. or something like that. So um, I'm still ambitious and I still want to build my own business. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't think I think to build that business, I can't just stop at that one. Right. One thing right. I have to build five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To I guess not to compete, but yeah, to compete. Or, <laughs> or, or form strategic right. partnerships. partnerships. Right. Yeah. Right. How about you, Julian? Uh, I think um, from what I've learned and experienced recently, I think a, the, the biggest part for us um, in making our own business would be um, timing. Timing and momentum mm -hmm. to catch the trendy wave. Because mm. I think that's what gives the most momentum to companies and businesses and ideas, you know, whatever it is. When, when social media, because the power of Twitter and Instagram, mm -hmm. if that becomes trendy, then the power is, is unlimited on what, you know, a business, what it can become. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. see, that's one of the advantages that you guys have, the millennials, because you are able to spot trends more quickly than right. the other conglomerates. Of right. minutes, it so. takes them forever. It's like a shark, you know, like yeah. a shark and a dolphin in the water. Uh -huh. Shark uh -huh. takes forever to make that term, but a dolphin... They hit them real quickly. Right, you see exactly. what I'm saying? So the millennials, they can spot trends and start going with it. So sometimes when they're pitching certain ideas and people are looking at them funny, mm -hmm, it's because mm -hmm. they saw a trend that they we saw, don't they see. They saw a trend. I mean, even with uh, when you take Facebook, you know, that that was not his Zuckerberg's idea. Mm -hmm. his, his idea was not creating a multi-million dollar business mm -hmm. or even a public-owned business. His idea was... To impress a girl. To create that a was, system that was, so he yeah, could get that, girl. that was all he did. Yeah. So that was his problem. Yeah. That was his pain, and yeah. he was solving it. Yeah. But it took off. It had legs right. because we were at that place where you wanted to be able to communicate, yeah. especially in a college environment. Yeah. And then, of course, after it it, it did, go, went through its way through the college, like, well, wait a minute. Outside people need mm -hmm. to be able to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there has does have to be a balance, though, because I think... Um, when we spend all our time speaking through Internet and online, you lose your interpersonal ex mm -hmm. uh, uh, skill set. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. very, very important. And yeah. I think that might be the one area that those of us from the dinosaur area mm -hmm. can uh, can help um the millennial to understand that it's still very important to be able to speak to people and to be able to have a, a personal relationship with yeah. them because everything done online is, you know, just not always or through an Internet type because you lose the empathy. So that's probably a good way to tie this into your next point. Build it before you need it. Build it before you need it because, uh, again, you can meet them online. You can meet them through Facebook. You can meet them through Instagram. But you don't know them personally. Right. So being able to take it offline to right. be able to have that communication. And one uh, business that has was a fantastic idea in the very beginning was the online dating uh, a platform mm -hmm. fantastic because it was a, you were able to meet large number of people uh, be able to communicate with those people through mm -hmm. chit chatting and so forth but what how it missed this point and where it's kind of in an interesting place right now is that they never came offline Mm. Some in the early, early days did. But now when you go to those services, everything is still and you don't know who's real and who's mm -hmm. not because yeah. everybody's created this re yeah. this reality TV type of person. That, that catfish, catfish yeah. right. So they, it went in a different direction, but it's harder for people to meet 
individuals to have a real relationship mm-hmm. where yeah. you're going to build on it and become involved in each other's lives. Right. Right. You know, you're not coming offline to make that happen. So mm-hmm. that's that. So that that industry. And, and so recently, in fact, we're going to have her on the show next year. There's mm-hmm. a, a young lady that I was at an event. She's a matchmaker. Mm-hmm. And so she has online, but she's also in person. She does interpersonal uh, matching. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's going to be on the show sometime next oh, year uh, for us because of business and love and all that kind of stuff is and, important. And, and you were pretty strong in that era because you had a business. I had a business in the early in days before, space before Matchmaker. So you know. Before Match.com, it, you know, before any of them. You should probably go pitch your idea to eHarmony. They probably use some of your strategies. Could be. You could you know? be. Yeah, yeah. Probably get some of those millions that they've got <laughs> hanging out there. Right. Because I think it sometimes it does you need someone again it's about networking yeah. if you were going to introduce me to somebody that you knew and you knew that their character was and that was the person that I would want to know then I would be open so oh, yeah I'd be interested yeah. but because now it's coming from a personal introduction and the same thing with you guys because you once what? you get out of college it ain't that easy to meet people <laughs> you, know, you know my mind is always running at a million miles an hour right a second right so with that background that you have within the dating, the online dating uh-huh. thing, why don't you use that to do like an online dating for businesses? Yeah. So business can date each other and figure out if they want to do business with each other. Oh, that's a good idea. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, matchmaking. In fact, I saw somebody. Am I spilling the bean here? Hey, this is copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that off. We'll talk about that offline. Speak about it offline. <laughs> offline. But yeah, because it becomes more difficult because that's important to be yes. able to make. Yeah, because that. See? Well, you know. And you already are the collector. I know. I'm already a collector. People. Well, it was interesting when I had my dating service, I actually on the offshoot of that. That was a networking service yeah. uh, uh, event that we did because business entrepreneurs have, you know, we're working. So you don't have time to go out and meet mm-hmm, people. And mm-hmm. when you are out meeting yeah. people, you're talking about business, right? Mm-hmm. So we created a, a network where you could interact with one another. Wow. So that was back in, that was like 20 years ago, wow. 1990. I just saw you with $100 million in your hand. Yeah, I know. That's, so I'm going to like get my that. $100 million. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get it. Are you going to um, get it? <laughs> but yeah, so, um, but that's important. Yeah. So that, but, and I'm going to tell you guys something about innovation. So some of our, when you say competition with corporations, so some of our corporations, they've had a business model that's been in place for hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. and hundreds of years. And they are tied to it. Like mm-hmm. it's They're an married on. to They're it. They're married yeah. to it. Yeah. And like some people that just stay in a miserable marriage, mm-hmm. even though it's not working. So when you take certain like a utility company, Edison, for example, Edison's, business model with providing energy and lights, mm-hmm. right? That was their business model. So when solar stepped into play, you had thought that's still lighting, mm-hmm. that they'd been the one to jump on that before any outside individuals got to it, right? Mm-hmm. For any of the new innovators got to it, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. So now they're playing catch up mm-hmm. and, and and they got disrupted. Yeah. And then when you look at your your blockbuster, uh, a lot of the bookstores, a lot of the businesses that no longer exist because somebody else was able to yeah. jump in on it. And right. I think that's the marriage between the millennials and the businesses is because I actually suggested to uh, uh, Edison, I said, you know, what would seemed to me was for you to create a relationship with someone that's in solar, maybe mm-hmm. just starting out mm-hmm. and have this amazing concept mm-hmm. or innov- uh, innovative idea mm-hmm. and you bring them on, you use your hundreds of thousands for R&D mm-hmm. and you help that business grow. At the same time, you guys work out a proprietary relationship so that you both own that. Well, and think, that's where you guys come in. They think they're going to give up market share. That's why they don't want to I know, it's do ridiculous. That. And they want to milk this. See, uh, in, in marketing, you have what they call the cow. Mm-hmm. The cow is, you know, it works dutifully and diligently. And at the end of the day, what do you do? You go there and you milk it. <laughs> and you milk it, you put it back out there, you feed it the next day, and it's out there. You go back tomorrow night, you milk it. So that's what a lot of these organizations do. They're operating a cow, mm-hmm. and they don't want to change 
millennials like you guys come along who are disruptors, yeah. who are disrupting the industry, industry. and the marketplace. Yeah. They can't stand you guys because you're <laughs> costing them money. Oh, yeah. So that's why they're doing what they do. And every opportunity they get, they try to step on anything that comes in their way. They try to qu squash it. Right. Right. So, you know, and that's why I'm saying, millennials, if you guys can pool your resources, pool yeah. your resources and form that alliance, you can control this market. Yeah. Yeah. So then that way. Yeah. Because if you guys are working together to, uh, to build that solidarity, yeah. uh, you're coming with a lot more force yeah. than one individual. That and that's why work. you see solar is taking a different direction. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because they recognize these big utility guys. They don't want to embrace them. Mm -mm. So they're going, OK, we'll mm -hmm. take the back door on you because we know we're going to get there eventually. See, their thing is to get to the consumer. If they can get to the consumer directly. Those big conglomerates, yeah, they're going to be out of business in yeah. no time. Yeah, so you guys can actually outthink them mm -hmm. because they're married to certain yeah. eyes, and you guys are much more flexible. Yeah, yeah. they're nimble. Yeah, they're yeah. nimble and they're spotting trends. They're jumping on trends. The trends may not make sense, and it may not be a trend to them, but they can make them into a trend. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So that's good. And you got to always be so. Once you do that which is how you stay competitive is is seeing where the trend is going mm -hmm. five, ten years from now because mm -hmm. a lot of people are not thinking out that far mm -hmm. on how you can make change. I mean, we do that as entrepreneurs. And I think actually that's the, for me, that's the true definition of an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is that you can see into the future mm -hmm. and see that you possibly can have a space in that future mm -hmm. and how you can create a component of your business to evolve to that place. And that would probably roll into your next point on here about doing your homework. Yes. So doing your homework, always be re always researching. And you have access to Google, mm -hmm. so you can look and read and, and just see where the trends are. Because mm -hmm. there are people out there that oh, that's yeah. what they do for a living. Yeah. Right. You know, even and, for us as African American, yeah. one of the things that uh, we don't, well, one is our consumer power. So if we take you guys, young guy, young, uh, young adults, and you guys come together because you guys are a huge pool of people right. and you get each other to understand why it's important for us to spend our dollars in our own community, then you have a voice. So, you know, the last year and a half with all the political crap, and I know you were very much involved in, in it. Um, look how he was able to galvanize people, mm -hmm. whether it was true or not. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have that voice within your people is understanding, supporting one another now. Yeah. And if you're starting businesses, support your 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 um your people and to build. So now we're talking, if we build our own schools, you build our own hospitals, we build our own banks, our own hotels, mm -hmm. our own things like that. And you have the support of, of, of your people to support right. you and understand that that one, two point two trillion dollars is actually their econ. So that's why they don't want you to go away anywhere with it. <laughs> yeah. They want to keep that one point two trillion, mm -hmm. you spending it with them. So yeah. they go through all kinds of machinations mm -hmm. to do that right and so we need you guys to pick up there is a, a guy and i think I, and I was gonna have him call in today but um his name is reginald ringo you weren't here the day he was here but reginald is 34 years old and he is a wall street um hedge hunt, head fund manager mm -hmm. black brilliant young man mm -hmm. talking about bitcoins and how the future and how we're not going to use paper currency and it's all going to be internet based. Yeah. Just, I mean, we're already using debit cards and so yeah. forth. But at some point, there will be no paper currency left, no coins, none of that. Yeah. Wow. Everything is going to be done intellect electronically. And it's going to go back to where we started trading. Trading. We're going to go back to a right party. Because that. right. that's because what the Bitcoin is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and they haven't figured out how to to regulate the Bitcoin because yeah. it's all going through. So mm -hmm. he's brilliant. So we're going to have him start coming. He's going to start doing a series of seminars oh, and workshops. So actually, we're going to have it for you'll be gone back in September. We're going to do it at your at, at um, your aunt Lorsey and Keith's church okay. and talking to the young adults there. Um, 
how to invest in the stock market, mm -hmm. um, how to invest in commodities, because that's the secret. That's the key. Yeah. That's how they right. create legacy and wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, Christo, not, you brought up a point earlier, which I just want to go back to briefly. And, you know, I'm not trying to uh, be all political about it, but there are two candidates. One did their homework. The other one didn't. Yeah. The one who did the homework won. Mm -hmm. And the one who didn't, didn't win. Right. Now, irrespective of how that homework was done or executed, they still did their homework mm -hmm. because they knew a little bit about their target demographic. Mm -hmm. right. And they realized that by knowing about that target demographic, they could feed them any information to get them on their, their side. Mm -hmm. Do you see what mm -hmm. I'm whether saying? Whether it's true or not. And whether it's true or not. Right. No ethics, but the, but the... But it is what it is. So that's one of the things about us, why we need to do our homework. We need to understand our target demographic. We need to understand their pain and why they have that pain mm -hmm. and how we can solve that pain for them. Because if we can do those things, then we can satisfy that pain much better than the competition. Right. Definitely. And in this case, it's us. You guys can help solve the pain within your own community. Mm -hmm. You know, utilizing what you've yeah. learned. I mean, yeah. both of you have got an, an amazing education and being able to bring, and as a leader, bring the people to understanding what's truly. So you've learned a lot because we've had exchanges ourselves on on and uh, on online on Facebook during the election time frame and understanding who we are as a people and, and the value. So that comes back to knowing our value, right? Mm -hmm. We are very, very talented. If you take the entertainment industry and the and and the um, uh, the sports industry, we are like 70 percent of those industries by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you take that money, the, those the funds and the monies there and bring those back here, we mm -hmm. can create better places mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be in debt for for forty thousand dollars <laughs> for 30 years <laughs> that stuff because we're providing our own supporting our own black colleges, mm -hmm. um, making sure that we get the education that we need. That's where it's important. And that so as the new leaders, um, uh, emerging leaders of our people. That's what we have to learn. And you have to go back and get your Pied Pipers and bring them right along with you. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to throw one last thing out there before you guys. If you guys don't remember anything else that we talked about on this show today, I just want you guys to think about it this way. Because this is how I think about business. And that's why I'm not going to say I'm the best consultant, but I'm damn good. <laughs> I'm damn good. And I'm good because I do forensics yeah. on the market and on my clients. I break down that client and I want to know everything about the client, what they like, what they hate, what makes them tick, that type of thing. And I want you guys to do the same thing. You guys are in a unique industry. Yeah. You're in a unique industry and you can take that industry and you can blow out all the existing competition. Yeah. So do your forensics. Do you guys watch CSI? No. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> start take start taking a look at CSI and see how they operate. Because if you use some of those strategies mm -hmm. in your business and entrepreneurial ventures, I'm telling you, can't mm -hmm. go wrong. And even in their networking, yeah. just building it with a purpose. Do yeah. everything with a purpose. Right. Yeah. And, can't go wrong. Yeah, and a goal when you both of you are great at setting your goals. So continue that on yeah. in, in your careers and yeah. entrepreneurial life because I think that as long as you have a direction and you have a plan, uh, you can stay focused. It's when we don't have plans that we get off track right. and we can be dissuaded and distracted yeah. from right. our goal. And plan to go out there when you were first business and make a million dollars. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we had a, we had a, we had a, a guest on, and she was saying she provides funding for businesses a quarter of a million and up women-owned businesses yeah. in the tech industry. Yeah. And so she says when she's coaching or uh, talking to uh, perspectives, she goes, "Don't plan on anything less than a million dollars in your business. That's right. that's, that's your goal, a yeah, million right. dollars." Yeah. If you fall short, okay, but you keep working toward mm -hmm. that. But don't start a business and I'm going to make you know a hundred thousand to quarter, half a million. Yeah. No, you mm -hmm. want go for the big. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then that changes because the dollars change. So yep. the next is two million, five million, ten million, that kind of stuff. Because it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, you hit on the right tech product, right. the right sport equipment, the right whatever. Somebody buy it for five billion dollars. There That's you go. Right. You never and know. That, that is happening every single day in the tech world. 
Now, before you folks leave, I'd like you guys to drop some wisdom on us to let us know something that we don't know. (laughs) Because you guys have been out there, you've seen stuff, and uh, I just want you to share something. It doesn't have to be prolific or anything like that. Just something simple that you think entrepreneurs could benefit from. So I want you guys to look in those two cameras with the blue lights (laughs) and tell them, you know, what do you think they need to know or how they should go about doing things? Uh, Well, I would say since we're talking about networking, uh, one of the most important things that I've learned and Julian kind of touched on it is um, networking with your own classmates. It might not seem like it's important at the time. It might just seem like they're your friends. Um, But it was funny, like at the end of my four years, our teacher was like, well, look around. I taught you guys to build a network outside of here. Now, you guys have been working with these people for four years now. This is your strongest network by far. Um, and just knowing that I have people in the Midwest, if I ever need help, I call them. Um, if my son ever decides to go to the Midwest, hopefully he doesn't, um, I call him. Um, <laughs> and he don't have that son right now, just so y'all know that. <laughs> it's down the line. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, just knowing that, you know, you always have their back. So the Build that network with other people, but also the people closest to you, too. Low-hanging fruit. Yeah, right, exactly. Low-hanging fruit. Wins every time. Right. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, man. Um, Julian. I would say from my experience, what I learned a lot this year um, with networking as well is sometimes it's difficult to approach someone for the first time or if you haven't talked to them in a significantly long period of time about something you need. Um. But a clo- then I learned that a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Mm-hmm. So that even though you may not want to bother someone and, you know, have the stigma of only wanting something when you need something, you know, in certain situations, you just need to have a conversation and bring up what's going on. Like I said, a closed mouth going uh, doesn't get fed. There's, uh, there's countless times this past year for me academically where, you know, a teacher may be able to help you with something or introduce you to something or refer to you to write te- the right tutor or right program or anything of that nature. Um, so always, uh, or never be afraid to ask. You never know what you're going to get um, the answer. And the worst that's going to happen is a no, mm-hmm. or and then you'll just be right where you are if you didn't ask. So when you ask questions, there's no other possibility than um, positivity and um, upward movement. Yeah, exactly. So and if you understand that a, clouds, a closed mouth doesn't get fed, <laughs> then you'll also understand that you don't have to eat alone. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to eat alone. You don't have to eat alone. And no is only the reverse of onward, right? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so the no is just the word. It That's don't mean beautiful. anything. You just keep moving. Right. Well, thank you guys so much. We so appreciate your coming. I hope you had a good time. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, us. it's yeah. a great it's a great venue here so speaking to everyone. So we'll make sure you get a copy. You guys can show you guys little radio stars. <laughs> 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 Celebs in the making, man. Celebs in, Celebs the, in making. the making. Our new email emerging leaders so we want to tell you guys to have a merry merry christmas um eat well work out afterwards uh enjoy your family this season is really about love not about craziness and 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 the commercial side of it and the other thing as i said at the top of the hour if you see things going on that you completely do not agree with especially while we're going through this crazy uh racial whatever you want to insanity uh, make sure you stand up for the people that are being um, affected by that if we come together and we say no to that behavior that behavior will go away if we stand back and we're silent while someone is being tortured or bullied then that's wrong and we can't tell our children uh, not to bully people and that we're against bullying is we as an adult are going to take up that practice and do that so the next time you see someone even if you see it on Facebook and you see someone taking it's on Facebook live but you don't see anybody doing anything shame those people because we are human beings and we as human beings need to make sure people are behaving like we live in a world of understanding and empathy and we were not put on this earth 
uh, in the same coat. We were put in different coats. That was God's plan. That's not our plan to change that. So we can't think one is better than the other. We have to respect all human life because we all came from the same place. And we will see you uh, next week or um, for the new year. We're bringing in 2017. So we want to go with a model. What we're going to do in 2017. 2017s, we're going to we're going to have some great fun. Uh, Crystal, with our entrepreneurs, we're going to launch those training programs. We're going to bring in five to ten small businesses, and we're going to coach and mentor them so they can be successful. They're going to be business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Exactly. And uh, the business zone will be here for the duration. We we'll will be become here. the source for you to come when you want to take your business, evolve your business to the next level, or you're looking to start a business. Uh, we are your coaches. And both of us have coaching uh, businesses, services, right. so you can contract us and hire us to help you take your business uh, to wherever you want it to go, help you map out a direction and a plan. And we want you to be successful and we are planning, we are going to be successful. Tell them how to reach us, Crystal. So you can reach us at the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and our website is the business zone with crystal and gilbert.com www.com and uh, we are out we're out you have a Merry Christmas and a prosperous new- 2017 yes Merry Christmas everyone this is the business this zone. zone with Gilbert <laughs> and Crystal, <laughs> and crystal. <laughs> meet Larry Larry is a general contractor Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186.